Hi everybody, if you're someone who wants to learn how to build a legendary brand in a market full of sharks, then this episode is for you. Because the story that I'm about to tell you today is the story of a 17 year old boy who had no money, no brand value and no investor backing at all. And yet, he went on to build a 2000 crore dairy business and that too in the presence of many giant competitors. Now just so you know, the milk industry is one of the most brutal industries in the country. Because your product will perish in 4 days, your margins are hardly 3-5% to and if you don't move your inventory fast enough, you will be out of business in no time. Secondly, during that time, Amul was the pioneer of the white revolution of India. So much so that in the 1960s, if you look at this graph, we were importing 50,000 tons of milk powder. But by 1990s, we became a net exporter of milk powder. Operation Flood, which ran from 1970 to 1996, is the world's largest dairy development program. Where the farmers would collectively decide their rates and sell directly to the dairy. This was the birth of Operation Flood under the newly formed National Dairy Development Board the world's biggest dairy development program that transformed India from milk deficiency into the world's largest milk producer. This was the effect of the white revolution on India. So during this time, all these milk brands and cooperatives had the perfect recipe for domination, which were money, brand value and technology. Whereas this 17 year old boy neither had money nor did he have the technology to scale his business and let alone brand value, nobody even knew he even existed. This boy that I'm talking about is one of the most underrated entrepreneurs of India who goes by the name Satish Kumar and the brand that he built is none other than Milky Mist. And today Milky Mist is such a successful brand that they sell 2000 crores worth of dairy products all across India. So in this episode today ladies and gentlemen let's go deep and find out how did a 17 year old boy carve a space in the challenging battlefield of the Indian dairy industry? What were the business strategies that helped Satish build a 2000 crore company with very less money and no investor backing? And what are the business lessons that we need to learn from the rise of Satish and Milky Mist? This is a story that dates back to 1992 when Satish Kumar was a 17 year old boy who had just dropped out of his school and he joined his father's milk business. But very soon he realized that their business was running into losses and if he did not do anything about it, they would have to shut down their business. This is when he identified three major problems in their milk selling business. Firstly, because there was no value addition to milk, they couldn't charge high margins so they barely made 30 paise to 1 rupee max per litre of milk sold. So this was a margin of barely 3 to 5% and sometimes they even had to sell milk at a loss. Secondly, milk had a shelf life of just 2 days. So they had to dispatch the milk within 10 hours of milking so that they could move their inventory at a profit. And thirdly, because of this, logistics was a nightmare and they could not expand their business. So they were practically stuck in a stagnant market with a low margin business and with no power of logistics at all. Then the question is, how did this boy turn Milky Mist into such a legendary company with 2000 crores in revenue? Well, the first thing they did was escape the commoditization of milk with a strategy of value addition. Now this seems like a simple statement, right? But you know what guys, this statement has a very deep meaning. So hear me out. This philosophy of business says that the margin of your product is usually directly proportional to the value that you add to the product. Let's take the example of rice. If you buy rice from a wholesaler and sell it in the market at 50 rupees a kg, your gross margin would be around 30% and you will make a 15 rupees profit out of it. But if you take rice and add 250 grams of urad dal and grind it into a batter, you can make 3 kgs of idli batter. To make these 3 kgs of batter, you would need 50 rupees worth of rice, 40 rupees worth of urad dal and 20 rupees worth of other materials. So the input cost is 110 rupees. But now, at standard market rates, you can sell this batter in Mumbai at 80 rupees a kg. So when you sell 3 kgs of batter, you make 240 rupees. Now, if you see, because of the value that you added to rice with urad dal and grinding, your margin has shot off from 30% to 54%. And now, if you turn this batter into idlis, something magical happens again. 3 kgs of batter will give you 20 idlis per kg and 60 idlis in total. And when you turn it into idli, it will cost you another 20 rupees of input cost for chutney and other items per kg. 
So the total input cost is 110 rupees plus 60 rupees, which is 170 rupees, right? And now if you sell a plate of three idlis for 40 rupees a plate, you can sell 20 plates of idlis. So the total revenue that you generate is 40 into 20 equal to 800 rupees. So now what's your gross margin? It's 800 minus 170, which is 630 rupees or 78.75%. So if you see, the idli that you're selling is still made out of the same 1 kg bag of rice. But your revenue has shot up from 50 rupees to 800 rupees. And the gross margin it commands shot up from 30% to 78.75%. So you see, as you added value to the commodity, your margins shot up from 30% to 54%. And then when you turn the batter into idlis by adding more value, the margins went up to 78%. This is how, ladies and gentlemen, companies turn a commodity into a high margin product by value addition. If this is very, very clear to you, let's see how Milky Mist applied this philosophy to milk. You see, milk is a commoditized product with a profit margin of just 3 to 5 percent. But what the founders of Milky Mist did was they procured milk and turned it into curd, paneer, and ghee. And this is where the magic of value addition happened. If you see this table, while the margin in milk is less than 5%, the moment you go to curd, the margins jump to 20%. With paneer, it's around 20% again, but with higher cost. With ghee, it goes to 22% and with ice cream, it shoots up to more than 35%. So Satish saw that the root cause of their business problems, which were margin, logistics and growth, is nothing but the milk itself. But if he adds value to milk, Suddenly, the margins shoot up by 4 to 5 times based on the products he sells. This is the reason why, ladies and gentlemen, Satish started selling paneer and ghee in the market. And this gave Milky Mist three major advantages. Firstly, as they went from milk to paneer, the number of competitors in the space reduced by a large extent. In fact, in South India back then, even cooperators were not bullish on paneer, curd and ghee type products. Secondly, like we saw, it helped them stretch their margins, which helped them make their business viable. And lastly, the beauty of value-added milk products is that as you go from milk to paneer, not just your gross margins increase, but also the shelf life of your product increases. So if you look at this chart, when you go from milk to ice cream, the shelf life of the product increases from 7 days to 30 days to 6 months to even one full year. This is the reason why Milky Mist started selling curd and paneer in the market. And this teaches us the first lesson in business, which says, if you are in a commoditized market, you will end up killing your own margins with price wars. But if you use value addition, you can escape the price wars of the market and actually make a profit. Coming back to our case study, in the southern part of India, the consumption of paneer was very less and it was consumed only by rich people. This was partly because refrigerator penetration in India was less than 20% in 1995. But in the late 1990s, the 1991 globalization effects were seen all across India. 1991 was a landmark year for India, with economic reforms changing the way we live, work and spend money. It's a budget that's set to change the path of the Indian economy. This country is the country that has to sell their land in the country. We are in a phase of restructuring our economy. So markets opened up, lots of people got jobs and the per capita income of India shot up. So when the middle class population of India became more affluent, they also became more aware of nutrition and food. And this is when people started seeing paneer as an important source of protein. And as you all know, while the non-vegetarians have chicken, mutton and eggs, vegetarians can only have paneer and tofu for protein. That's it. This is the reason why suddenly paneer started selling very well in the South Indian market. So this looks perfect, isn't it? Satish found a great market and a high margin product which had less competitors. So Satish must have had a very easy time building his business, isn't it? Well, absolutely not because there were three more challenges in the market which were way more difficult than just producing and selling paneer and curd. So the question is, what were these problems and how did Satish tackle them? 
Firstly, India's milk source was extremely fragmented. In fact, even today, if you see, it is so fragmented that we have 7.5 lakh small dairy farmers with an average of just two cows or buffaloes. So you can imagine how difficult the situation was in 1995, where there was no internet, very less highways and very less logistics infrastructure. Secondly, the farmers could not be bound by a contract to sell milk only to one company because back then it was considered to be a taboo of corporate control. Why? Because we were a socialistic country where the word business was an evil word. But funnily, at the same time, the loyalty of the farmers was such that tomorrow if somebody paid them more money, they would happily sell their milk to that company and they will just cut all ties with the existing company. So you as that milk company might suddenly lose thousands of liters in supply of milk. So long story short, it was very difficult to win the loyalty of the farmers. The third challenge was inconsistent quality of milk from different farmers. This was because education was very less amongst the farmers and they used to feed unhygienic or not so nutritious food to the cows that led to inconsistent quality of milk. So in short, supply was not guaranteed, quality was not guaranteed and logistics was not high class at all. Then the question is, how did they solve these problems? Well, the first challenge of scattered supply was solved by the location itself. If you see this map, this is the Erode Milk Belt. For those who don't know, Erode is a major milk producing city. Why? Because Kaveri water was available to the citizens of Erode in large quantities and because of water, agriculture prospered in this region. As a result, good quality feed and fodder were available and hence more cattle was owned in Erode and the adjoining areas. This way, milk procurement became a little bit easier. The second challenge of farmer loyalty was solved in a wonderful way by Milky Mist. You know what they did? To win the loyalty of the farmers, they identified the most pressing problems in their life and became the farmer's lifesaver. And there were three major problems that they solved for. Number one was lack of loans. This was because the banks could not trust the farmers' credit worthiness. Secondly, they saw that the farmers had no reliable source for animal care. So as a farmer, in the middle of the night, if your cow collapsed, you had nowhere to go. No doctor was available during emergency and you just had no option but to let your cow die. And lastly, the farmers were uneducated about the latest technology in the market, because of which they were not able to increase their income. So Milky Mist solved these problems immediately. Firstly, they used their rapport with the bank to give loans to farmers. Secondly, they launched 24-7 animal care helpline and gave ready access of doctors to farmers at subsidized rate. So the farmers could immediately seek help from these doctors and keep their cattle in good health. Cherry on the cake, they even got them cattle feed at zero profit so that the farmers could produce great quality milk. And thirdly, they educated the farmers about the latest technology and even arranged financing so that the farmers could produce more output and eventually make more money. And the best part was that Milky Mist paid farmers on a weekly basis. So this way, the farmers had enough cash flow and they could take home money and they did not face cash crunch. And this payment today is done digitally straight to their bank account so that the banks could track their income and their transactions and eventually they could increase the farmer's loan eligibility. Now you tell me guys, as a farmer, if a company takes so much efforts to pay you on time, to take care of your cattle, to help you get a loan and even takes the trouble to educate you with no contract binding at all, my question to you is, won't you be loyal to that company? This is how Milky Mist won the trust and loyalty of the farmers without a written contract. And in return, they again got three major benefits. They got high quality milk, they got consistent supply of milk, and most importantly, they did not have to worry about competitors stealing their farmers. And this teaches us the second lesson in business, which says, while good companies focus on extracting maximum value out of their partners to maximize their profit margins, great companies collaborate with their partners to help them deliver maximum value and eventually end up increasing their profit margins. This is one of the golden attributes of conscious capitalism. And if you remember, this philosophy of helping the partners is what turned Japan from a war-torn country into the second largest economy in the world. This is how, ladies and gentlemen, Milky Mist solved their supply problem. But now the question is, they were buying so much milk, that is fine. But how did they manage to sell their milk products and what did they do different from their competition? 
Well, firstly, they started with five star hotels in Bangalore. This is because five star hotels have a very strict regulations about paneer. For those who don't know, five star hotels have these strict regulations of using high quality paneer, which needs to be stored between zero to four degrees, specially. They also need to have the perfect level of consistency and quality of paneer. So while local vendors struggle to match the quality, Milky Mist could fulfill all their criteria. This is how they got their first set of customers. But as we all know, the total addressable market for five-star hotels in India is too small. In the entire country, even today, we barely have 324 five-star hotels. So this was too small of a market for Milky Mist to make a hefty profit. But at the same time, this was enough customer base to keep them running. This is the reason why they stepped up their game and reached out to Kirana stores. So again, this looks very simple, right? I mean, what can be so complicated about asking Kirana stores to sell your paneer, which is a high-value product? Well, as it turns out, Milky Mist encountered two more challenges. Number one, the Kirana stores back then did not have chillers to store the paneer for more than two days. And secondly, the transportation from factory to the Kirana stores was a big, big problem. So if you see the shelf life of paneer without a refrigerator, it's not even two days. So if the trucks did not have refrigeration and the Kirana stores also did not have refrigeration, the company only had 48 hours after manufacturing to ship, distribute and sell paneer at the retailer. And if the customer also does not have a refrigerator, it will get spoiled within just one day. So this was a big, big problem, which was lack of refrigeration in trucks and Kirana stores and the shelf life of paneer. And as we know, even refrigeration was only present in 20% of Indian households. So the question is, how did Milky Mist solve for logistics and refrigeration? Well, this is where they came up with two very high cost solution and it almost looked futuristic to all the competitors back then. Number one, they decided to give out 20,000 chillers to all retailers who could sell their paneer. And if you remember, this is what Coca-Cola did to distribute their soft drinks all across America. This cooler keeps the air just below freezing so that with a simple touch of a button, you can enjoy an icy version of your favorite Coca-Cola beverage. And this will allow us to expand to many, many more places because it leverages the coolers that are already out there. You're starting to see there's over a thousand of these in stores in the US already. And secondly, their paneer was manufactured in their factory in Perinde and got transported to different cities in the south. So they installed chilling technologies in the trucks so that the products could be stored in cool conditions till they reach the retailer. Basically, Milky Mist was one of the first companies to build a cold storage supply chain. Now, any seasoned businessman would ask a question as to why didn't Milky Mist outsource their logistics to a cold storage company? Because that way they could reduce their upfront cost and they could skip the headache of managing the staff and logistics team, right? Well, that is what even we were wondering. But when we spoke to the stakeholders in the dairy business, what we understood is that even though outsourcing gives you cash flow, it takes away your control over quality. So if outsourcing leads to degradation in quality, you must bring it in-house even if it is costly. And this is a very, very important lesson for all entrepreneurs because we somehow choose the convenient option of outsourcing because we feel like we need not have the headache of managing a staff and paying them consistently even though they might have less work. But what we fail to realize is that that outsourcing might lead to degradation in quality and efficiency both. Now, in case of Milky Mist, they noticed that the drivers were shutting down the truck's refrigeration in between their trips with a fully loaded truck, which was decreasing the shelf life of paneer. They were also not punctual with the deliveries, which again affected the logistics schedule. And Milky Mist could not do anything because the trucks belonged to a third party provider. So Milky Mist decided to purchase the trucks and operated them all by themselves. This way, they could control both the journey times and the quality of the product. But you know what? This is where they faced another problem. When you own these trucks, you can send cheese from Eero to Shimla, but most of the trucks would return empty, right? So automatically, the transportation cost would shoot up. In fact, it would double. So you know what the team of Milky Mist did? They managed to build their own return logistics system. For example, if the truck full of Milky Mist products goes to Shimla or Kashmir, the truck does not return empty from there. Instead, they might get apples from Kashmir back to Tamil Nadu. So they actually made a profit out of their return logistic system. And today, Milky Mist has more than 250 cargo trucks and tankers all fitted with GPS mechanisms to keep track of their data and their location. 
So this is how Satish found a gap in the market, leveraged it to make a profitable business, solved for a fragmented market, solved for the trust of the farmers, and then built a logistics supply chain to turn Milky Mist into a 2,000 crore revenue company, and did all of this by selling milk and milk products. So what are the lessons that we learned from this case study? Lesson number one, if you are in a commoditized market, you will end up killing your own margins in price wars with competitors. But if you use value addition and branding, you can escape the price wars of the market. So find a way to turn a commodity into a value added product and sell it under a brand name and invest heavily into branding. Secondly, while good companies selfishly focus on extracting maximum value from their partners and increase your profit margins, great companies collaborate with their partners to help them deliver maximum value as a result end up increasing their profit margins. This is one of the golden attributes of conscious capitalism. And lastly, even though outsourcing gives you cash flow, it takes away your control over quality. And if outsourcing leads to degradation in quality or efficiency, you must bring it in house. This might mean high cost initially, but it will pay you dividends beyond your imagination. These are the lessons that we learned from the rise of Satish and the brand called Milky Mist. That's all from my side for today guys. I would specially like to thank Satish and his team for spending their precious time with us in helping us understanding the Milky Mist story, in helping us derive these valuable business lessons. It really means a lot to us. And guys, if you have a message for Satish and Milky Mist, please drop a comment. I think he will have a wonderful time reading your comments and your messages. If you learned something valuable, as usual, make sure to the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.